everybody, and welcome to a short rest. I am the homeless guy who runs the gauntlet and the founder, uh, Michael Brill. I am joined today by future gauntlet contestants, Justin Kim, our veteran. Hello. And Duncan, how are you? Very, very excited to be participating. Oh, that's cool. Um, I wanted to do a player's uh, short rest because you guys never seem to get one. And <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to kind of do a pregame show. Justin and Duncan are right about to get into a actual gauntlet in a little bit. And I kind of wanted to just pick their brains and see what they like about D&D and doing stuff in general. Um, they're about to also go into Haro's gauntlet. Say hi, John. Hello. Yeah, he's here. Um, so, to kind of begin, why do you guys play d and I'm going to go with Justin first and then move over to Duncan. Uh, well, mostly because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, that's good. What, what, what do you enjoy about it? Um, originally, what I enjoyed most was the metagaming aspect of it, trying to really build like a strong character. Um, but as I've played, I've really grown to like the role-playing aspect of it as well. Um, I like, I like getting into my character's head and trying to imagine situations from their point of view and acting accordingly. It's a lot of fun, I think. Okay. So you kind of came out originally like as a more like game kind of orientation and that has kind of developed into a story idea. Yes. Yes. Um, I very much enjoy strategy games um, in general. Yeah. Uh, so that was how I approached it when I first started. Uh, and listeners, you don't know this, but Justin also enjoys uh, wolf t-shirts. And they're majestic, <laughs> as always. Justin, how many wolves are on that t-shirt, just, uh, just for our uh, listeners? I think there's like... Seven? Seven? There's like three obvious ones, and then there's like seven ones that are hidden mm. in the picture. In the night. Hidden yeah. wolves. Yep. I wear it fairly often, so you'll yeah. probably see it at some point. Very good. Uh, Duncan, <laughs> same question. Uh, why do I like playing D&D? Yeah, same thing. Um... Well, I think you know. I think I have a similar story to Justin's, where I was uh, I was originally intrigued by the numbers. They allured me, and I was I was lured in by them. And you know, just just the, the you know the tomes. You know, you you browse through these. You know, you have three books laid out in front of you, and you say, "How can I be the best that I possibly can be?" And then somewhere along the lines of it, you fall in love. You make somebody who, you know, maybe they didn't start off as a great character, but they become somebody. Their experiences shape them. And um, just the idea of group storytelling, sitting down with a table full of people, and yes, no, the DM take, takes a very important role, but um, I really believe in, in players as well as having a pretty big role in what the story is, and... Role playing is something that's it's very much swept under the rug with a lot of D and D. You know, it's, we we all want the combat and we all want um, you know the dungeon crawl, but it's 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 the tender moments that I think make it the really really the best. Is there for either of you guys? Is there like a single kind of uh, moment from any uh, campaign that kind of sticks out to you a ton? Is there any favorites, top ten, anything? Not top ten, because that we'd be here forever. But kind of, uh, kind of a favorite thing that you guys actually were able to achieve or do. I mean, some of my favorite tales come from a a druid that I played, um, and I I like using the beast shape. Yeah. So, but the session that I played it in, I could never maintain that form because people would always attack me. So. Like, I went into a bar one time as a mouse because I was going to be small. And then someone made a wager that they could hit me when they saw me, and they did. Who, and, who was that? Uh, I was actually playing under John Harrow. Okay. Um, he is a very good DM, by the way. As what character? Um, Kissing up now will not help you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best part about this is 
people are going to be listening to this gauntlet like a couple of months from now, and they're going to be like, "Why are they talking about it? Like it's a couple of hours." It is, folks. This this will well this will probably be released right before we actually release your this will this is the pregame show for sure. This will probably be released a week in advance. Well, that's a bunch of audio that won't make it into the final cut. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, to, to to be completely honest, I love the uh, actual release schedule that we always have, which is just like, yeah, no, it's consistent, but not as much as we'd like it to. So we're gonna, I mean, we keep working on it. Um, but Duncan, same question as before. So favorite moment with a character? Yeah. Um. This is kind of lame and goes against exactly what I've just said, but uh, one of my first experiences with D&D, I was a, uh, a Dragonborn Warlord, I think, in 4E, and um, I, I just loved Dragonborns, because they were the first bit of, like, you know, lore that came out of Dungeons & Dragons itself, not, you know, directly ripped off of Tolkien or somebody else's world, like the Vancey and Magic system. But just the idea that there were these dragon humanoids that were accepted by society, or not in certain scenarios, it just blew my mind. And the fact that they could, you know, have that breath weapon, it was really incredible. And so, um, one time, I took out a whole storm of, of some sort of low-level monsters with just my breath weapon. And I think that was kind of when I, I started to get a feel for, like, how the numbers and the character itself can come together. Because if anyone anyone who's played a dragon dragonborn knows, the breath weapon isn't usually the best damage dealing thing. It's usually a really good AOE or maybe you know one of the effects. But it was what that it, what was what that dragonborn would have done in that situation. He would have he would have let the flames of his ancestors rise up and then billow out, and it just it just took out this whole group of something that he found detestable. I, for, I forget exactly. Was it a what it red was. dragonborn? I was a red dragonborn, yeah. Okay. So very, like, classic. To this a was, this was middle yeah. school. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, no. will, I will be fair. He was very unoriginal. But, um... <laughs> it's okay. The first time I played, I was a Ganassi. And, yeah. you know, Very got, original, folks, for those who don't know. Yeah, no. Uh, um, and then I wanted to be really different, so I made an Illithid. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was, that was, I think, that's... One of the best, because I had the satisfaction of using the mechanics, but also the... I don't know how to say it. The I felt justified. Like the, the actual world and the numbers, like yes. you said, were coming together. I, it wasn't, kind of it wasn't together. just that I said, oh, this is, you know, this is the most effective thing, or, you know, meta-wise, this is better. No. I you know I said to myself this is this is what I would do I would I would rear back and I would finish I you know this this bold punctuation mark to what I'm doing here and I did it and it was it was that was I think where I started to fall in love with the indie I mean in that in that same train of thought like is there a class that kind of strikes you because for me I I know for a fact even though I've tried barbarians and fighters and stuff like that spellcasters and sorcerers and wizards that that kind of not warlocks but wizards they kind of they suck me in back i, I know you're going into the gauntlet as a warlock too i like, am okay. going in the warlock as a gauntlet and that leads into the warlock as a gauntlet <laughs> the warlock as a gauntlet hello yes i am loquacious uh i am words are good um Yes, I'm going into the gauntlet as a warlock, and I think that that pretty much sums up what I've always been tied between. Torn, rather. I always want to be either full-on, half-naked barbarian holding the, t the, you know, the, the freshly hewn heads of his enemies. Yeah. Or the scholarly academic wizard who sits in the back and just blasts off volley after volley of incredible spell. And I found something of a middle ground in um, my newest character, Akiko. That's good. I mean, Justin, with, with the, the kind of class thing, is there a class that you lean towards? Is there a class that you kind of uh, gravitate towards? Um, when when I originally... Playing. yeah went into this, 
I was immediately attracted to the magic classes. Yeah. Um, it feels like you just have options. Right. Yeah. But what I've, what I've found is that I actually kind of like the simplicity of a more combat-oriented class, um, and especially the effectiveness of... I've been playing like rogues and things like that recently, and I found that it works pretty well. I don't have to be a main hitter, but I can do substantial damage. Yeah. It should also be said, um, I've, I started off with saying I love role-playing and then proceeded to talk about mechanics. I also love barbarians because they can be the embodiment of chaotic good. They can really, really believe that something is right and then not care about what anyone says about that and just leap into the fray for the sake of, you know, truth, justice, and orphans. Um. <laughs> I mean, I actually, and this is something we like, so in that kind of same vein, if someone you know is trying to make their first character, uh, because we try to help out a lot of new players here too, um, is there kind of advice that you would kind of give about the classes or how they should go about it at all? I mean, there's a hundred different angles they can attack that from, you know. Um, probably, unless you want to get really into the lore, some people don't like reading through the whole book. Yeah. So in that case, maybe it's good to find someone who's played before and knows their way around the handbook, and then you can just say what you want and they can help you create it. Yeah. Um, other than that, I would suggest as a first time going with more of a combat class than a spell class, because picking spells is a lot of work. And it's a lot of reading. Well, that's why you do a sorcerer. So. <laughs> you don't have to pick every day. <laughs> don't got to do those spell taxes. Well, but I mean, every time you level up. <laughs> yes. you have, no. And you, you have, have to, to read through, through yeah, yeah, and figure and out what exactly. there are a lot of spells. Yes. And they do wonky effects, um, mm -hmm. especially if you are... I think, I think Spellcaster is definitely for the wily player who wants to try to outthink or outsmart a DM and try to do something differently um, that kind of can do some shenanigans. At least that's always yeah. my feel from if, it. If you do it right. Yeah. But, I mean, you can be just as wily with a, a fighting character as well. Oh, no. Grimjaw, Strongjaw. Yeah. I, I, by this point, the, the audience has heard his lore, and he's a ranger, and he... He wrecked. The many tales of Grimjaw Strong. Apparently his son is being created. Uh, Jimjaw, yeah. Jim yeah. Tim. Tim Jaw. Tim Jaw? Tim Jaw. So, so many jaws. So many so many Imjaws. There's like there keep getting more people added to that, that family. So Is there more you, than just Grimjaw? I'm pretty sure. Like oh, I only I only knew Grimjaw and his mighty damage that he was able to cause to just about anything. Um, so, yeah, I am I'm unaware as to what else he's been able to accomplish. Or his family, that is. S same question for you, Duncan. New players. So, um, for new players... I guess maybe a history lesson isn't what everyone wants, but... Um, <laughs> Let me tell you the lore of the land. <laughs> yes. In, in the olden days, there were three. There was him who punched monsters, him who deactivated traps, and him who lighted the way. Um, and that's, though, you know, that's the archetypes that you have to work from. And, you know, we all know a rogue character. We all know a barbarian. We all know a magician. You know, there's, there's, we have tropes that we can assign to these. And I guess my suggestion would be stick with the basics and, you know, don't really defy any, you know, don't really defy any expectations with your first character. Your first character is the one where you basically just, you know, you say, I want to make someone who's a lot like Gandalf. Gandalf was a cool character. Or you say, I want to make, like, you know, ye olden hand solo. <laughs> and you can't, you can't, you know, give them any yeah. any crap for it because, you know, you're a noob. Yeah. We, we all kind of look at each other's characters and be like, oh, well, you know, he's obviously just, you know, your standard, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, you know just, although there's just one difference or, you know, oh, well, okay, he doesn't have a problem with this. But your first character is the one where it's just sort of 
static and you get to experience the world and you get to have fun with not having to worry about whether it's original or not i feel like you know coming into it you don't know any of the prejudice we which prejudices we have i didn't for the longest time i didn't know that nobody likes dragonborns if you're a dragonborn fan out there <laughs> you are in the minority i know i know one guy who exclusively plays uh dragonborns actually i kind of know too um, but they, and they both swear by them. And, you know, it, Dragonborn, I think, gets a lot of flack. Actually, I think it's funny, running the gauntlet, I had no idea how, um, how many elven rogues there are out there, but I feel like I get 30 kids, like, every, you know, once the gauntlet comes around, when I start asking for, hey, who wants to be in it, you, I get, like, a bunch of kids who are just like, hey... I'm an elven rogue, and they start telling me about their character. And then I'll be like, what level are you? And they're like, I played one session, I'm level one, and I'm feeling this. So can I please be in? You know, why... Now, this is, I mean... Not to be any, too unfair to any DMs, but why don't we just lead the sheep to the slaughter? <laughs> why don't we just let, like, That's I don't a, know, 20 level ones take on a challenge rating... That, Seven dungeon. That is a very old school way of looking at things, for sure. Because back uh, in older editions, there kind of is a stigma that the DM is your like, enemy. Yeah, no, he he's trying to kill you, um, and that was actually part of the game for the longest time. That's really what the gauntlet is. The gauntlet is a little peek back into what Gary Gygax would have had at his table. Yeah, it's a mean, little a little peek. The gauntlet, I mean, now, since we're on the subject, hi. Um, I mean, we got one kind of gauntlet veteran and one noob. Um, well, it's, it's um, you know, I've been, I've been looking, peering in through the, the steamy window at, at this cozy little family of dead corpses. <laughs> and I've, I, you know, I've always said to myself, I want to join them. I want to become one of those poor dead adventurers. I mean, I, you know, I, I, uh, I, I offer you this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty much an exact quote of what Mike said to me once I said, hey, can I be in a gauntlet? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, it was made to be a, uh, unflinching, beautiful challenge that I, I think that part of it, like, it's half, like, look at the amazing labor that they have to undergo and the other half is ah mike's a sadist you know so that seems to be <laughs> the fun <laughs> bit is for whatever reason the dm gets all the credit for how good the the dungeon is and you get all the the you know the flack for how come this is so hard how come the mortality rate is so high mike why oh no it is, well i either get i either get three my three reactions are um that i usually get are this is turning into my interview um but <laughs> mike, are, they want to hear about the gauntlet let's just go for well, it well i'm i'm going to get to that in a second but it, it's usually the it's uh mike you are just killing off characters, like, merciless. Like, just, I'm, I'm just taking heads off babies. That's just what I'm doing. Um, the, these are people that trusted you, and you are betraying them. Um, the other one is, uh, the gauntlet sounds cool, and I think it's really cool. It's, like, very Roman Colosseum. I never want to touch it. And then, and then there's this third person who is sitting to my left, Justin, who goes? I don't know what you're talking about. As, who goes? Yeah, I'll do another gauntlet. <laughs> like yes, it, like they're, they're, and and then you also get a lot of these people who just like I said just started playing and they are very much uh, oh the you know the gauntlet is like major league D and D is it not? <laughs> I mean, to a certain extent, it is. Um, but Justin, tell me about. Your experiences with the gauntlet, without spoilers, uh, extreme spoilers, because I still want people to watch our videos, <laughs> um, and also kind of, is there a game plan? Is there a possible game plan you can have? <laughs> John is way too excited about what to say. <laughs> yes, let me listen to this game plan as I finish preparations. <laughs> 
Um, well, I mean, the immediate thing to remember is that you have a 90% chance of fatality. So, fatality. <laughs> um, there wasn't a game plan for the first gauntlet. Um, I don't think anyone had a game plan for the first gauntlet. I think Alaric was mostly like, um, yes. <laughs> I mean, Alaric <laughs> planned out that dungeon incredibly. I, I, I give a lot of respect to the DMs about how much work they actually do put into it. Because they, there is kind of that, you know, we're being recorded. <laughs> There's that, it's it's kind of a, it, it's uh, a lot of DMs take it as something kind of serious, which I really do enjoy. Um, and Alaric kind of set that precedent. Um, but yeah, no, it's, there, there was a lot of things about that first gauntlet were just like, eh, maybe, you know, uh, and the fact that, uh, this isn't a huge spoiler, but I'll, I'll say it, the fact that you guys made it to the final room, like all four of you, and were okay, um, I, is, I, I remember just sitting there going like, ah oh, man, if, if they win... If they win on the first gauntlet, that's great, but... It's that's, ruined. It, it's mm. bad PR. <laughs> it's ruined. If only we took a short rest. Yeah. Um, but now, a short rest. What, what, uh... What... So, so the first one you said there wasn't a game plan. What about the second one and this one? The second one, I went into it with the mind of... Don't engage anything that doesn't attack you. That was my theory, because the less damage you take, the better. You just creep on by it. Um, so that turned out interestingly, and if you want to figure out how that worked, go watch the second gauntlet, <laughs> because I'm not going to spoil anything. Yeah. Um, now, going into this third gauntlet, my thought is, kill everything that moves. <laughs> um, <laughs> avoid damage where possible. Um, but don't, like, it's kind of weird, because the strategy for me, the thought, has kind of evolved to be crafty in combat, but don't try to be crafty to get out of combat. Yeah. Because, so far, avoiding combat, um, has turns hurt out, you. <laughs> interestingly and usually badly. You feel, you sound very hearty. <laughs> You sound like a lot less bright-eyed and bushy-tailed towards the gauntlet. No, the gauntlet is a lot of fun. Yeah. I really enjoy it. I, I mean Hardy in the sense of just like you went from like, ah, creep around and hey, I don't know what's happening to kill everything. Make sure it dies. Right, because what you realize is that a, a fully fleshed out adventuring party is sometimes more capable than you think. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, so, I think that's true for us as players and for the DMs as no, well. I, I think I think the biggest thing that happens to me every time, and, and this is my third one, but every time we do a gauntlet, the players never cease to amaze me about how wily and how just crafty you guys can be. Um, and, and I think that really is... This in D&D terms sounds silly. A testament to the human spirit... <laughs> Um, That's a quote. Yes. That's a quote from somewhere. <laughs> um, so, Duncan, mm. kind of the same thing. You've heard, you've heard gauntlets. Yes. Um, Did you I'm, ever listen to the first one all the way through? Yes, of course. <laughs> I don't know. I was just curious. That's you think. As I said, I was an orphan peering in the window. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to each gauntlet as it came out. Um, it's worth it's worth saying that this character was made for the gauntlet. I sat down and said, Mike, I'm going to win. And then Mike laughed. And then I laughed. And then the table laughed and we killed the milkmaid. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I... The requirements... Okay, the requirements for entering a gauntlet is that you have, have, you have to have started below level 3... Three or below, yeah. You have to have three sessions. Bare minimum. And you have to care. Yep. I completed these in the order that I stated them. I started at level three. I then got three sessions in. And more. And then I started to care. <laughs> and me and this... Can I, can, I, can I say the name? Is this going to come before the gauntlet? 
What, your character's name? Yes. Let's save all of that for the actual package. Okay. So, I've had my ups and downs with this character. I've I've done new things, and I've, you know, I've discovered what there is to discover about it. And... <sighs> going to be sad to see them leave if they do. Because I have plans in that far-flung future for her, for this character. Yeah, for it, that, him, what? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it's... that That is always uh, kind of a thing. And we always try to say that there are ways, especially, you know, rescue campaigns will probably become more of a thing as the gauntlet goes on rescue campaigns or this concept that hey my character died right i want to get him back how are we going to get him back well when your character died he probably went somewhere in dnd rules we're trying to keep as much of the gauntlet in 5e as possible um so and that represents you're laughing too much haro stop um, but usually that represents a rescue mission to some people. And I know people who want to do rescue missions and want to do rescue, rescue mission for characters. And we kind of entertain that. However, it, it's not... It, it's never that easy. It's never that easy to go to a different dimension. It's never that easy to retrieve someone from the gauntlet. So the long story short of this is that somewhere... Out there, Gonthak is just beating the <laughs> crap out of poor souls in Valhalla. Oh, yes. That is how I imagine it. Uh, he is at an eternal feast and bar fight. I mean... <laughs> well, you know, that's the interesting thing about Bar... bar- Valhalla. I lost the beginning of that word somewhere. And Valhalla. I had to, yeah, I had to pick it back up again. Um, people always imagine Valhalla as being feast in one part... And then you go out and fight. I think it's just both at the same time. I think it's just a bar fight where, like, you can get a couple bites in as you're, you know, you kind of have, like, you know, double fisting these drumsticks and just beating somebody with them in between taking bites off of them. I mean, by the way, the listeners can't understand that beautiful flailing motion (laughs) that Duncan just did. Um, But... So something that is also kind of funny though about the gauntlet is the weird character memorials or be, being like just if you are in a gauntlet they get you get gauntlet favorites and that was okay I don't know how I missed this that was another thing that brought me to the gauntlet is even if I die I will live forever <laughs> Oh no, that the the fame and glory, man, and that's why and that's why you get characters like Crix and Gonthak in the first Gauntlet really kind of took on this life of their own past that where like I was seeing people on Reddit going like yeah no Gonthak's pretty cool and who's this who's this deep gnome who's able to take out uh, like a Winter Wolf or something like that and also by the way one of my favorite things I've ever had to edit is when Crix is fighting a winter wolf and there's a deep pause from Justin and he's trying to figure out what to do and he goes, I pull its tail. That Wait, that killed me. <laughs> yeah, you I use you use major ma- ma- no, basically someone was the winter wolf was mauling another party member. Oh yeah. And Crix said, I'm gonna use Mage Hand and then paused <laughs> to pull its tail. I literally could not. Think and of you made it out of that session, do. that situation, way better than you should have. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone pulling on a winter wolf's tail and being like, "Yes, I lived," <laughs> until the undead frost giant got me. <laughs> okay, and let it be said that if they had dropped anybody besides Yorm the giant on them, they probably would have been fine. I mean, that last. I can tell you this right now. That last chamber, me and Alaric stayed up nights debating. Because Alaric's first draft and my first draft... got Well, not my first draft. It's his gauntlet. But my kind of first ideas... Um, like, for instance, the skeleton ceiling. 
And I, I, I made that. That that was one of my kind of ideas. But my original thing was like they were coming out of the floor, I think, or something along those lines. And I want to say it was him who said upside down, fall from the ceiling, something along those lines. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, I do remember it was him though with the undead jo- frost giant, you know, bursting out of the ice and you know uh, emerging, and everyone goes, "No, it's right over there." Now. So the plan seems to be, you seem to be kill everything. Live fast and die hard. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I mean, now, there, there's one character that I think by now has been confirmed as a reoccurring character to a certain extent. Um, uh, the man, the myth, the legend. How do you feel about Sindleton? <laughs> Gasp, he comes back? Yeah, I mean, come on. At this time, the second gauntlet has not been released, so gasp, That's he comes fine. back. <laughs> actually, actually, by this one comes out, it would have been. You don't know. Time of recording. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It, it's like a TARDIS. It's great. Um, I get to throw audio into the future. Um, <laughs> I've never thought about microphones that way. Yeah, no, man. It's fun. Um, yeah, Justin, you've dealt with this wily old man. Sindleton, Sindleton, I think, from a player standpoint, is a beautiful person to have in the gauntlet because you really can't tell with him. You, it's almost like he's malicious, but at the same time, he's just completely oblivious to everything. And so you end up not really liking this character because he doesn't help you at all. Um, But at the same time, (laughs) like, we don't know any of his motives or anything like that. All we know is that he's the guide and he is supposedly a very powerful wizard. Um, Who's made completely in the rules. Filthy. I I mean, by the way, I remember uh, when I first... stinking books. (laughs) His big sack of books. Um, Someday I'm going to steal that bag of books. (laughs) I'm gonna make off with the whole thing. Um, probably not. But. <laughs> just run away. Just hey, I got the book. Um, actually, probably probably my favorite one is when I actually uh, the gauntlet first went up, and I asked Duncan what he thought of it, and he goes, "I hate dirty wizards." And no, no, no. It was singular. <laughs> I hate dirty wizard. <laughs> <laughs> dirty wizard. <laughs> Oh no, he's he's a lovely creation. I gotta say, there's a lot of what, what's wrong, Duncan. <laughs> so many emotions welling up. <laughs> this character, which I'm about to play, is not a nice person. <laughs> She's also quite perceptive to um, other manipulative magical people being one. She's she's not really going to enjoy Sindleton. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. There's going to be much gritting of teeth and quite possibly outright provocation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you never know. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, no, actually, have you, uh, have you, either of you actually ever thought of, um, is there a, a character, uh, I, Duncan, I know you've only heard the first gauntlet up to this point because that's the only one that's been up, but is there a character from the gauntlet that you in particular really enjoyed? Because I'm just thinking of, right now I'm thinking of all the, uh, Lovely characters that we've had run through. I've always had a penchant for barbarians. Um, Gonthak might be the saint of barbarians at this point. Gonthak is probably (laughs) king of Valhalla. There's probably (laughs) some sort of, like, like, sort of tiered system. You know how, like, Goku fights his way through the other world tournament and is now fighting other uh, dead people from other universes? That's what Gomvac is doing. <laughs> Gomvac is fighting his way through the actual, like, dimensional barriers. 
saint of barbarians. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> You might be. I mean, it's funny when I talk to people and, you know, it's just like when I mentioned the original roster and, you know, you, you go Ash, Crix, uh, 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 and then <laughs> wh- who's John's character again? Pawing at the air for what uh, this character's name was. Royu. Royu? So, and uh, it was a, a weeb name. And... Uh, <laughs> And, and then when it, you finally Roku, get... Roku, I think. Roku. And then when Rakum. you... Rakum. Yeah, Rakum. Rakum. Something and, like and that. When, and when you finally get to uh, Gonthak, everybody kind of goes, Gonthak, yes! Everybody loves a big, stupid punching machine. Alaric's writing something. <laughs> Rokun. We have, we have been informed that it is Rokun. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. It's not spelled correctly. Silent. Silent Bob. <laughs> Um, Does that J- mean J? J? I could be J. <laughs> I could be J quite easily. Um, I'm pretty sure we have to edit that bit out now. <laughs> we can make that. Can reference. you mention it? I, I wonder. What are the rules there? It's fine. Uh, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> if this gets flagged by our uppers, well, you know. Um, so kind of, kind of getting towards the end here a little bit. So you guys are about to go into the gauntlet. Um, it'll be a gauntlet that I'm really excited to see get played. Um, I kind of gave Alaric the same question. Favorite race? Favorite monster? And kind of why? That's a good question. Um, as far as... Oh, you want... Do you want time? Sure, go ahead. (laughs) Pick. Um, <laughs> I can't say as for my favorite race. Um, you got to. That's, that's the not rules. Not yet is what I mean, <laughs> good sir. But my favorite monster is by and far the Beholder. Um, again, Behold. again in the line of, you know, original D&D, um, you know, things that go boo in the night kind of, kind of business. Beholders are scary. Beholders have a lot of crazy business that they can do with those eye lasers and are the only thing more formidable than your party's own wizard. And, you know, that being said, wizards are very versatile. And, you know, as, you know, it's in every fantasy universe, do not anger a wizard. <laughs> that's, that's just a general rule. If they can do magic, they can bend the fabric of the universe, it's probably best to stay on their good side. And a beholder is basically, you know, wizard plus plus that it looks at you and hates you. And it and it has all of this, you know, eldritch knowledge. And it has, you know, they reproduce by having nightmares about each other. And, they, and it usually ends with one of them killing the other, ensuring that all beholders are stronger than the next. And that, you know, they're, they're Daleks. They're the Daleks of the of the um, the D and D universe, and exterminate. It, exterminate. Yeah. It's and if I could play a beholder, I would do it. So if you could play a beholder, <laughs> if I could play like just a baby. Have you ever little, used one? Have I ever used a beholder? No. Yes. No. What do you mean? Like to to look at things? Did I behold <laughs> via beholder? No. Uh, it, if whenever you've been DMing, have you ever? Used oh a yes. Um. I haven't really had any long-running campaigns, but I did have a spectator, um, which I had some fun with. And um, if uh, if anyone becomes part of the Steel Main Guild, uh, they might find some interesting Ied things in the Earth Mountains. There's a shameless plug. There is a shameless plug. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, no, I mean, Beholders, I think, are one of those... I, I think they're special to me just because the first thing that ever killed a character for me was a beholder. So wasn't that the first time you played? Yeah, I I did a campaign where the guy basically built the world before anything else and just dropped people in it, and uh, it didn't matter what level you were if you made a wrong turn, you're in a bad place. Which is again a very old D and D way of oh, looking yeah. at things. Your CR has nothing to do with the CR of the world. (laughs) 
and I we made a wrong turn into the wrong cave, and there was a beholder in it, and my party was good enough to be like, hey, let's uh, let's try to make a cave-in or something, and I decided to be like, guys, you get out of here, I'll hold them, you know, level two <laughs> me, like, I'll hold them off, <laughs> I got this, and uh, I can I can say without a shadow of a doubt, this thing demolished me, and I I don't even think I got hit with one of his beams. I think he might have just bit me, because uh, <laughs> I like tried to run up and like stab it, um, and uh, it just went chomp, and then the rocks fell and everybody died. I mean. Uh, I wow, think... rocks fall, everyone dies, roll new characters. How <laughs> original. Oh yeah, no, well the cave in, yeah. Um actually but that's that's kind of the reasons why like I and I didn't really even know because everybody like when I first got into it, everyone was freaking out, like, oh no, there's a beholder, there's a beholder here. Oh my oh my goodness, like what do we do? And I was like, a beholder, that's just something to... we're fine. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> we're oh, how and then, wrong you were. And then someone shows me a picture, and I'm like, he doesn't have arms. We're fine. <laughs> we're going to be okay, guys. We're going to make it out of this one. Um, they did. I didn't. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were right. It yes. didn't have arms. It did not have arms. Um, oh, my God. What if one beholder dreamt of a beholder with arm? It would be Mike was asking. Oh <laughs> uh, no! So, same question for you, Justin. Favorite monster, favorite race? Um, I think I'm I'm not very familiar with a lot of monsters. Um, with the monsters that I am familiar with, you could say Kabold for both if you want to. <laughs> Kabold, even I mean Kabold. both <laughs> for undisclosed reasons, which shall be found out soon. Uh, if you watch the third gauntlet, um, I feel hey, like hey. I should be loyal to Kabolds. Um, <laughs> okay. That being said... That's the, the first other... time anyone's ever said that. Kabolds are a monster <laughs> I like. The monster that I hate are... Not Kabolds. What are they? The, uh... Oh, the gibbering mouthers. Those are freaky as all get out. Yeah. Um, and so I do not want to be in the same place with one of those. I almost threw one of those at you last night. <laughs> that... You are a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, gibbering mouth, or you said? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, done. Twenty six of those <laughs> ordered um, from Amazon. Let, let me just tell you all. He already had that page bookmarked before you. <laughs> nah, man. Well, spoilers. <laughs> this will be great. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, as far as favorite player races, and this is one that I learned about recently um, with the new the new Volo supplement that came out. The Kenku, actually, sound like a really interesting race from a role-playing perspective um, just because they're a bird species that can't fly and that wants to fly, and they have absolutely no creativity whatsoever. So everything that they do, they have to have learned and copied from someone or somewhere else. Yeah. And you get to talk like, Kenko, Kenko. What is he, a Pokemon? <laughs> they, are, <laughs> they are like crow-like and crows aren't very There are ways no. around that. I mean, uh, well, I got... It is a player race. It is perfectly sentient. Kenko. I mean, I, I threw some Kenku at John and while we were leading up to the second gauntlet. And that was... Uh, pretty funny. I don't know. I, I thought it was funny just because of uh, how John had never fought them, and he was just like, wait, they're... What is that noise? Oh, hi, upstairs. God? <laughs> <laughs> um, but... <laughs> He's like, don't do it. Don't be in the gauntlet. Um, I love you, my children. No, but... Uh, no, the... Um, the uh, big, uh, I threw a bunch of Kenku at John uh, Spencer, uh, Rokun, and uh, he uh, he was kind of perplexed by them because he kind of got to pick one of their brains a little bit, kind of talk to one, 
And yeah, no, it, it was really interesting to play up a uh, a monster that, or uh, before it was a playable race, a monster. Monster. That, <laughs> monster person, crow people, but that <laughs> that uh, was really just like you said, no creativity because of some curse or something. Like uh, that. their deity, their deity didn't even just curse them; he just took it away. He just he just kind of reached into them and plucked it and said, "Nope, no more." Well, None I think for what you. they tried to do is they tried to start a revolt against him. Yeah, they were they were crafty and they they, they you know they were like, "Well, you are keeping us here, craw craw." And he was like, oh, "Okay, this is bad. Let's let's not have this anymore." <laughs> so 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 you said gibbering mouthers are the ones that you hate. As far as I'm sure, there are many worse things. I'm, I'm just wondering what what's your favorite one though, if if there is a favorite one, or is that your favorite to hate? <laughs> that is currently my favorite to hate. <laughs> to hate. I don't know. I, uh, I I I've talked about this loads of time. Nothix man. Come again? I don't know what those are. Those are good. Those are good. Am I <laughs> going to find favorite. out what those are, John? Uh, not tonight. Not tonight. Oh. But they're they're uh, totally tonight. They're <laughs> they're they're a, they're a favorite of mine. I think we even mentioned them on our last short rest. But yeah, no, they're basically a monster that uh, has a, an ability to just know your deepest darkest secrets, like that one from Adventure Time. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm turning this around. This is the Adventure Time podcast. Okay, Fire Princess, <laughs> Flame, Flame, Flame Princess, Flame Princess. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Finn being like, yeah, no, I want to date Flame Princess. Oh yeah, it's not like she's just fire. <laughs> <laughs> so he makes himself a baked potato. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so this was actually uh, not to say that I'm biased or anything, but I got a a. Uh, kind of a question from uh, my uh, d- d- girlfriend and she yes. <laughs> she asked me she want she I asked her I'm like I'm asking these guys questions what do you think I should ask them and kind of as a joke question if you were to assign mm. a mascot mm. to the gauntlet mm. what would it be Sindleton Sindleton I mean <laughs> yes I mean, but besides that, besides an old wizard with a bag of books cackling into the night, what what else do you got? Is this in universe, or is this yeah, like in universe. any kind of mythology or, or uh, any sure any of any kind of mythology? Zeus, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Duncan? The labyrinth, I suppose. Just the entire labyrinth with like googly you know, eyes, like a little. <laughs> You know what I mean. I threw something at him. <laughs> you know, just just the image of, uh, you know, just the 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 endless puzzle. Because I feel like that's what it is. You know, it's a that's what every dungeon is. It's what the spirit of every dungeon is. Is every you know at the end of the day, the best dungeons of death are derivative of the labyrinth, and that's what it is. Is um, you know, there are puzzles, there are traps. There are monsters to overcome that are not meant to be, um, and within its within its you know heart there is treasure, untold and and you know fame beyond. And um, woo, woo, give me loot. Woo, woo, give me some loot. Um, that kind of yeah no I I I, I can totally see that you know. But like if we're talking like Felbin gob, gob <laughs> you know, um, I guess like a cutesy beholder, a cute little beholder, was like, it's like, like it's a, going to kill you. But oh, look at like it. its little <laughs> arms hold. It's like holding like a baby rattle. It's got like spikes on it. <laughs> big big anime eye. <laughs> That's what a beholder is. It's an anime eye just floating around. No, like but like drawn. Like really cutesy with the little like, kawaii desu yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> I don't understand this. I don't speak weeb. I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember, kids, if you ever, if Mike is ever around, you don't want him to be. Just say kawaii desu and then I will start walking away <laughs> slowly. He will start slowly walking slowly at first. <laughs> he will start walking kawaii desu away. <laughs> Get away from them. 
And all right, so we got Baby Boulder, Justin. Um. Now I want to get some art of a baby beholder. I feel I'm like sure it's out there. I bet it is. A baby holder? <laughs> a baby holder? This is the internet we're talking babe holder? about. Babe holder? Absolutely. <laughs> you you thinking like a monster? A yeah, monster it doesn't matter. It? My girlfriend asked me this to ask you. So any answer at Hi April, any answer <laughs> will make her happy. <laughs> And I'm in the doghouse right now, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> the points. <laughs> um, I mean, I think as far as like describing the gauntlet as a labyrinth, yeah. I really agree with that. Um, as far as just like... Well, in, in that case, you especially being the vet, is there... For people who want to do the gauntlet... Or even DMs or players who want to make a gauntlet type thing, is there advice that you guys have? Um, your level does not determine the CR of the monsters. <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of the old timey way of looking at it, and that's that's what the spirit of the gauntlet is: is that what lies down there isn't necessarily meant for you. And that's that's part of what allured, you know, the allure of the gauntlet is that it's not. The gauntlet is custom built to the characters that are being in it, but that's just so that we don't win in some sort of cheap way. But um, it's not calculated. There, you know, I don't I don't believe that anyone sits down and says, "Oh, this is the suggested XP cost for a, you know, an encounter of at this level." No, the DMs pick probably the trickiest, you know interesting wow that's a weird way to handle that rule i guess that's why you know this random monster tucked away in the middle of the g's somewhere is <laughs> somewhere you <yeah>. know <laughs> i mean it's yeah no be wily um i i mean i'm just asking you guys as especially just people who play D D, people who are aficionados um Consors even <laughs> gentlemen adventurers um, I'll go for it so so is there is there advice for if people want to do their own gauntlets or people want to kind of do their own thing with it or people who want to even go into it um, as I, I can speak from a flawed perspective on designing because I'm a player and I haven't actually designed anything but um, I would say be creative um, it's like a Kenku. Well, like in the, <laughs> this is a little bit of a spoiler for the um, the first gauntlet. Um, We've already spoiled the ending boss room. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> um, in that ending scene, there was um, a chase scene, and that's never something that I've encountered in D anD D before. It's always fight the monsters, kill the monsters, keep going. Um, I think that in a situation where you have a dungeon that's meant to be hard. Um, it's okay to have chase scenes and unmatchable odds and things like that. Um, it adds a lot of variety for the players because it's not just, how can I kill this thing? It's... How do I, I survive? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, how far do I go before I cut my losses? <laughs> so, and from an outside perspective on that first uh, gauntlet, it was really funny to see how long it took to dawn on people that, like, wait a minute, going not towards that is also an option. <laughs> and you know, people seriously considering what happens if we just sort of let Sindleton go out there, stay there. <laughs> what if he just dies? <laughs> Oh no, there's and you know there's always that um, uh, kind of extra thing when you do the gauntlet. What what come what people take out of it, or when I put my ear to the ground and what I hear from people, especially, is um, it's really entertaining. And this is again that Roman Colosseum kind of thing. It's really entertaining seeing people at their wits' end, going, "Okay, how do I make it through this? How do I beat this?" boss how do i get to the next level kind of a video game standpoint but how do i get past this 
Um, and like Duncan keeps saying, it's a very old school way of looking at things. Um, I, yeah, no, it's it's absolutely uh, kind of bananas. I don't know. I enjoy my own baby, which, you know, that is... A weird way of saying it. Yes. <laughs> Incredibly weird. Don't let your children around the mic grill. Ah, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to edit that part out. <laughs> I'm sticking to my words. <laughs> <laughs> Do not let children near you. No, that's your words. My words. <laughs> so what you're saying is they shouldn't. Come on. <laughs> Keep your baby beholders away from me. Uh, oh god I'm, I'm really now I'm just running through my head of like infant versions of tons of different D&D monsters it's terrifying just I mean, baby cause, illithids cause we've all seen a baby dragon you know yeah. what, what good campaign doesn't have someone pick up a dragon egg and then be stuck with it for the rest of ever <laughs> cause they never die <laughs> It should be noted, if there's someone's compa- familiar or companion, they will not die. <laughs> oh no, if you, have, if you have a dragon or a baby dragon with you and he's on your team some, in some fashion, um, first of all, that dragon probably sees you as its familiar. Um, and, and more so than that, it, uh, it might be smarter than you. <laughs> Just straight up. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> or at least Dragons your character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, that that's actually um, you know, a little quick thing. We it, it's not a no dragon policy, but we we thought, for, especially for the first couple gauntlets, going dragon in the final room is if we do have a final room is very I don't know cliche cliche. Um, we might like I've always wanted to do like the very 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 like classic. Dungeons and Dragons, like you have to go fight a dragon to save a princess, um, but we'll be progressive and make it a prince or something, you know, something along those lines. It's like Super Princess Peach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does she save Mario in that one? Yes. Ah. She and her magic umbrella. You can't forget the umbrella, folks. Never leave home without it. Peach, Poppins, come on, guys. Don't leave home without your magic umbrella. Absolutely. Is there a favorite? Magic item that you guys have? I mean, I only have one magic item. No, like in general. When you look through magic items. I've always been really interested in not particularly magic items themselves, but how they interact with other magic items. Like, you know, the fact that it says in the handbook that anytime you put any sort of, you know, time-space... Time, you know, like TARDIS-like object. Anytime you take a bag of holding and a bag of devouring or a um, a portable hole or anything of that ilk, anytime you put one inside another, there's a rule that says that it creates a portal to the astral dimension. A rift. Because rift. Yeah. Excuse me. Because they know that that's the first thing that comes to your mind. What happens when you put a, you know know a dimension inside of a dimension? Well, you rip it out to where you know all the space trash goes. I mean, if I'm ever going to say my favorite magic item, a movable rod, bag of holding. Those two. Because they're such classics. Yeah. No. Maybe a special sword. You, Justin? Um, I'm not familiar with that many magic items, but all of those things... I Sound like. great. <laughs> Justin's is like, I like a potion of healing now and again. <laughs> well, that's, that's another thing to be said, is I've always been a fan of the mighty weapons you know I, I you know i can't think of really anything besides like a vorpal sword or something like that but like that's that'd be great that's 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 high fantasy book level that's that's sort of the chosen one that's some good stuff right there <laughs> all right my final question of uh this lovely podcast should we take a short rest yes Yes. What, you mean during the gauntlet? Please. Just, just Should we take a short rest? What Please, is your answer? Guys, this when is, anyone ever says that. This is my PSA. Anytime. In any campaign, really. <laughs> in any campaign. Someone says, hey, you know, I'm a little low on HP right now. Can we take a short rest? Think about it. Think about it real hard for just a second. Because if your character 
has been fighting monsters all day. And even if their occupation is fighting monsters all day, I mean, like, my occupation can be flipping burgers, and, you know, I still get a, a guaranteed um, break, even if it's just five minutes. Okay, so a short rest is now an hour. They fixed that from 5e, because it was super abusable. Your characters are going to sit down and, you know, rub their feet, you know, kind of, you know, stretch the shoulder out, and be like, oh, man, wow, this armor's really heavy. Oh, wow. Oh, man, this nap is going to be so great. It's just realistic. It's what people do. They sit down and have just a moment for themselves. You know, the fate... The fate, the fate of the universe can't always be hanging in the balance. There isn't always a big ticking timer, you know? And if, if you're going to go and save the princess even, she's been in that castle for a while. An extra five minutes really isn't going to make all of the difference. <laughs> or so, she gets eaten by a beholder. Well, unless, so please, ladies there's... and gentlemen, take a short rest. <laughs> Justin, take a short rest? What say yes. you? Yes. Probably so. a good idea. <laughs> Well, uh, our hour for our short rest is up. You all have been wonderful. You've had your rest. You've had your stay. Uh, how now, many how many hit dice do I get back? Uh, we will find out. Go. I'm, I'm probably like a D6, right? No, you're like a D4. Oh, jeez. You, you get a D4. Oh, okay. A D4. Three hit points. Oh, Three. four. Hey, four hey. hit points, guys. There we go. I feel invigorated. Now get in that gauntlet. See you guys later. Thank you guys for being with me. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. having us. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>